metaphor of beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that hopefully I have remembered to change this to black and white. So it's like you're watching a film noir. Mm -hmm. But what it actually means, as you will know from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description, and this is the latest instalment of three continents, one palette, with, of course, the beautiful Nona and the beautiful Laura. Not to be confused with incontinence, one palette, but that's a weird thing. No one wants to see that. <laughs> as you can tell, <laughs> Hubby makes a few guest appearances. Oh, Lord, help us. The palette we are using this month is the Adjust My Luck palette because, well, I wanted to use a green palette this month and it is March and that includes St. Patrick's Day which is the 17th <coughs> so if you're going to any St. Patrick's Day parties by watching this film, Nona's film and Laura's film you will have three different green looks to choose from from different parties. So you've got one for Friday night, one for Saturday night and one for Sunday night and then your Monday hangover, mm, that you can do with yourself. So, if you want to find out exactly what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor then my friend you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I'm having to film this later in the day than I planned for a number of reasons. One, it's been ridiculously overcast. And if I had tried to film, even with my strip lights on that I have on, you would not have been able to see what the hell was going on. I would have had to then play with the exposure in post-edit. And I always pride myself on not doing shit like that. I'll sometimes brighten it up if a photograph isn't very bright to show the colours off. But I don't dick about with films because I want you to see what you can actually achieve so that and the fact that for some reason the last few days I don't know whether a busy weekend a couple of weekends ago is catching up on me or whether it's the change of season or what it is but my body just lately has been you don't want to get up and do something. You want to sit here on the sofa and just watch YouTube films. Which is pretty much what I've been doing all day. But, this is the latest film in the Three Continents One Palette film. It's going to be slightly different this time round because Laura, who is in New Zealand, so she's the furthest south continent of the t of the three doesn't actually have this palette that we're using today but because Nona and I wanted her to continue in this series with us I, I'm still a nail down I haven't had time to get to my nail tech yet just ignore it if you can <laughs> I'll try not to wave my hands around too much um, because we wanted Laura to still be part of the uh, the collab, we said, uh, look, why don't you just dupe it? Just use the same sort of colours and, you know, still be part of the collab. Because it wouldn't be three continents, one palette if we didn't have the three continents. Technically, it's not just the one palette anymore, but it kind of is because the palette that Laura is using this month is the reason that she didn't buy this palette. 
It's a palette she already had that she felt had an, the, the same sort of colour scheme so that she didn't need to buy this palette. So it kind of technically is still the one palette. So <clears throat> we did a palette bingo. I actually remembered it was palette bingo this time. I forgot last time. Um, and I ended up with this let me point with a nail chocolate brown deep green mid green greeny goldy shimmer and lighter green so deep joy four mats one shimmer so that's not a bad ratio I suppose really I'm going to be using some of these brushes that I got from AliExpress with the kind of crystally base on them. I'm going to be using a very very fluffy blender, a pointed blender and a flat packer or concealer brush today I think. Now <clears throat> as always, oh, this remains a teaching channel. Uh, that combined with my pain means that I blend slower than most people do. However, there is a speed widget helpfully provided by YouTube up there, somewhere. Please feel free to use it instead of moaning that I am going too slow. Yes, I still get people saying that, even though I say this at the start of every film. And it's in my description. Appetise. Right, so this is wash moisturised and primed. Clearly I didn't SPF it. It's late at night, the sun's gone down. There was no way I was pulling the curtains and putting lights on before the sun had gone down. Um, I've been trying this Korean, um, like a pore filling, skin soothing, calming makeup. This Venzen. Everything is... As you can see, not English, apart from a couple of bits where we've got rose hip oil and camellia oil in it. So I guess that's the moisturising parts of it. Um, I'll let you know how it goes, but it was dirt cheap on AliExpress, so I thought I'd give it a go. I kept seeing it advertised on Facebook. If you do that, if you see something advertised repeatedly on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, take a screenshot of it, go to AliExpress, search for that picture. Nine times out of ten, it will bring the product up for about a tenth of the price that the advert's paying it for. So, uh, I've waffled on for quite a bit already, plus should have had the intro, which hopefully I did in black and white, but hey-ho. Um, I'm going to insert the part now about eye shapes <laughs> where I talk you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded eyes because there is a difference. They have very similar um, issues to face which is why a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded eyes so they follow the instructions for hooded eyes and wonder why it doesn't work. So, when I insert this piece, I'm going to be very up close and personal. Please don't scream. Once we've gone through that inserted section, I'll be back to put some colours on. So, there you go. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky 
so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm -hmm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So. I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I'm back. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with Kiss My House. This is the lightest of all the greens. No, I won't. I'm going to go into Act Natural, which is the the mid-tone green that I got down here and I'm going to pack some of it, not that you can really see it because this is a teal topped brush um, I always hold the brush right at the very end and obviously I'm going to be doing my usual circle manoeuvre in this direction towards the nose and obviously reverse in the direction to come back now I deliberately tapped off quite a bit of the pigment because I wanted to build this up slowly. So, Nona and Laura, how do I know them? Well, I've known Nona for longer, so I'll start with her. Um, we'd been in, I'd been following her channel for quite a while. Um, and we'd been involved in a couple of group collabs 
um, and I'd approached her to do one of my picture inspiration collaborations, the PIC series, which she was more than happy to join in with, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, and she put a film up one day. She was so distressed, so upset, bless her heart, because a YouTuber had been so nasty to her and so rude. Now, if you don't know Nona, she is one of the nicest, most caring people on YouTube. I have never, ever heard her say a bad word about anybody. Um, and she was really distraught at the way this larger YouTuber had treated her. And I was furious because I'm like, Nona is such a gentle soul. For someone to, to be that nasty to her, it's just horrible. Why would you do that? Why would you? It's like like beating a puppy dog, you know. You just wouldn't do it. Um, and I was furious. And I'd also collabed with Anya. And I messaged her, going, "Do you know who it is that's upset?" No, no. I said, "I'm furious." And Anya said to me, "I'm not going to tell you, but if you guess right, I'll let you know." I said one name, and I got it bang on. And do you know how I know? Because that person had been a complete and utter bitch to me as well. Um, so Nona and you and I formed, at my behest, the Bitches of Eastwick. Because all three of us had been victim to this particular bitch. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I class myself lucky. To consider Nona a friend because she genuinely is such a kind, caring, she's a genuine person, you know, she's the kind of, she's the kind of woman would give you the shirt off her back if you needed it, even if it left her short, you know, she's just, she's lovely. Um, and she put a thing up on Insta a while ago um, saying that she wanted to do a collab based on the Colourpop Nine Pan palettes. And uh, I messaged her going, hmm, that sounds like fun. I've got quite a few of those and I've got quite a few more since. I picked quite a few of them up on Depop. Um, so, uh, oh, that could be quite fun. And she said, oh, awesome. She goes, um, Laura from Gold Star Work is also wants to join in. Do you mind doing like a triple collab? And I'm like, sounds even better. Because again, I'd collabed with Laura in group collabs. But at that point, we hadn't actually collabed individually. We have since collabed individually. Um, but yeah, so that was how the collab started and Laura is... Oh, she's an inspiration, she's a painter, she's an artist. Um, I was so honoured that when she got to choose the picture that she wanted to use as the inspiration for our first pick collab that we did in my series, she trusted my skills enough to use one of her paintings that she'd done of her view from her window in New Zealand. Um, and that trust is such a lovely thing to get that someone who is an artist and obviously is proud of the work they've produced trusts you enough and trusts your abilities enough to use that as inspiration for an eye look and to know they're not going to, you know, ruin your painting kind of thing. 
Um, she, I have learned so much from her. She did um, a film when the Aha Honey palette came out. Now I'm quite lucky because I've actually worked in uh, the print industry, so I know how colours mix, I know how colour theory works. So I already had an idea of different colours that you could blend with a yellow. <clears throat> but one thing I'd never managed to blend with it properly without it going muddy or without having to do an editorial look where there was less blending was purple. And she did a film, as I said, when the Aha Honey palette came out showing you how to blend yellow with all these different shades because most people were thinking you could only blend it with brown and I can now blend yellow and purple together simply from what I learnt from her um, she has an amazing teaching ability uh, without even realising that you're being taught which is awesome and she has the most beautiful soft lilting, almost fairy-like voice. Um, you know, you, Titania, Queen of the Fairies, I think, would sound like, like Laura. You know? Uh, and likewise, she's a lovely woman. I've just cleaned this brush off, <laughs> as you can tell, on a microfiber cloth. Um, I don't like using um, colour switches. They're far too harsh on your brush. Right, now I'm going to go into Kiss My Hass, which is the lightest of the greens. i just got a glimpse of my fridge then. And uh, if I can get it. There we go. Yes, that is the Top Gear Hot or Not thing. Did my own Top Gear Wall UK viewers will know what I'm talking about for that. Right. Every time my mates came round, they used to bugger about with it and move things from cool to uncool, etc. I was not impressed. Right, so I'm picking up some of this lighter shade. And I'm just going to use this along the top edge there, just to blend this other green out. And just to really blow that top line out. Really, really light strokes. You're barely gonna notice it because it will just look as if this green is blending and fading, and that's the effect that I want. <clears throat> the base that I'm using is, as ever, my Crow and Pebble. Um, all of my discount codes are listed in my description box, and they all clearly state whether or not I earn from them. I don't earn from the Chrome Pebble one. I accumulate pebbles when people order and I can offset that against future orders from the store, which is lovely. Rather than getting a payment back. And I've had quite a few of you message me saying that you've bought the one that I use, the um, cotton page, the white one, and are loving the way that the colours pop on your lids now. She does um, six different shades at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are chocolate brown and a black. And then there's three skin tone shades in between. So you should be able to find something, no matter how deep a melanin you have, that will work on your eyelids. But because I'm super, super pale, and um, because the first time I picked her primer up, I was using pastel pigments of hers, I wanted the white primer to make the pastels pop. And because I didn't have a white primer at the time, I was using either concealer or the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I'll be perfectly honest, since I've had this, I've gone through one pot already. 
of this primer and we're good way down the second pot and I have a third pot as backup ready and I bought a friend of mine a pot of it to try as well because I just I think it's great now when you're doing your eyes like this always sit back and just double check relax your brows and just double check that the shape that you're doing matches both sides because your eyes are not identical and you may find that you actually have to do slightly different shapes both sides for them to look the same or you can just do a Jimmy Chuck and Photoshop them and cheat but that's not what we're doing here I like that a lot. Right, clean the brush off, then I'm going to go into the more tapered brush and I'm going to pick up the brown. This is the sort of, it's, it's almost like a pencil brush but it's got way too much movement in it to be a pencil brush. So I'm going into Charmed which is this murky greeny brown and I'm going to pack that on the lid on the on the tip and then through the crease tiny tiny little circles slowly building it up in the outer corner here Dropping the brow just to make sure I brought it along far enough and up high enough to be seen and really buff this corner out. Grab a little bit more and just pack the outer third. Next door's kids are having fun. That's the nice side that doesn't swear so I don't have any worries about cutting out what they're saying if it gets picked up on my camera hopefully you can see the definition that's given the outer edge to the eye I do struggle sometimes on this outer corner here I get very very dry patches, almost like an eczema um, and it can make it quite difficult to blend shadows on which is why it had that darker strip just there but because I knew I was putting this deeper colour through the crease I wasn't overly worried so I didn't want to overwork the colour and make it go muddy because I knew that when I put this in and blended it with that, it would actually hide that point. Now one of the things I suffer this side is I've got super deep creasing just here, as you can see because I've still got that tiger's effect there. Um, unfortunately the circular movement doesn't work on this particular eye because this was pulled around too much when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. So what I have to do is when I put the shimmer on, I actually have to stretch this lid out, which I don't like doing and I don't advise doing to anybody, unless you absolutely have to. Um, but if I don't do it, all that happens is that the shimmer pigment builds up in that crease. Um, but it, it builds up loosely, it doesn't, doesn't go on blended and then uh, as it dries and I sort of move my eyes through the day I get a cascade of powder coming down which is not good. Right, got my flat packer brush and I've got my Slay All Day Jasmine for wetting the pigment after I've put it on the brush never go in with a wet brush to a pressed pigment. Uh, the reason I'm using Slay All Day instead of one of my cheaper ones 
um, is because, quite simply, the jasmine version of Slay All Day, for some reason, uh, dries my jawline out. I have no idea why. Uh, it just does. So, I just save it for wetting pigment instead. So I'm going into the olive U, which is the shimmer that my palette bingo gave me. I've just packed pigment both sides, as you can see. And I'm going to wet that. And then you need to dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is pop it into your knuckles and just spin it around a few times. Because you don't want moisture getting down and loosening the glue that's holding your bristles on. Right. And now on this side I can just use the weight of the brush to flex the lid. Spread the shimmer onto the two thirds of the lid that as yet had not been blessed with colour. And then using the very tips of the bristles, I'm just going to buff very, very lightly where it meets that brown mat on the edge there just to soften it a little bit. Right, I'm just going to dry the brush off before I go back in to do the other eye. I know what you're thinking, there's a green I haven't used yet. Don't worry, I'm not done yet. I'm done, I feel it. Who knows that song? Right, this is what I was saying about having to stretch this side out. Now you can see I only pull it out absolutely as far as I need. I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll. I'm spreading the pigment on as quickly as I can. And then letting go. So I pull the lid out for as little time as possible. And then for the rest of the lid just Again, use the weight of the brush to flex the lid. And then again, lightly buff the outer edge there, like so. Voila. Right. I'm going to pause you while I go off screen and pop some foundation and bits and bobs on. And I will be back to finish this eye look and show you exactly what I'm going to do with that last green that I haven't used yet. Now, I'm going to have to wait until the next time I press record to speak to you. You, my darlings, however, will see me instantly. Hello! I am back again, as you can tell. Right, I am going to grab my little Jeffree Star angled brown brush. I have already soaked the brows. Kind of getting used to that look, you know. Right, I'm going to go into Mobamba, which is the darkest green that I was given. That I was given, that the randomizer gave me. Oh great, the sweary side has just started shouting. That's all I need. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to very gently use this powder in my brows. Because I don't really have a green that's the right shade for this. I don't really want to go to the hassle of mixing one. And this is just a little something something that 
could be a little tip for you out there. If you wanted to do something a little bit different with the brows, you can just go over it with some eyeshadow. That's the hubby. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Trying to sneak through from his shower and as always, bless him, when he tries to sneak, he lands on something. So I lift my knees and lift my hands up. He does my sneak like it's an episode of Scooby Doo, honestly. I will film him one day and put a picture of what his sneak looks like. You're not today, baby. I'm just practicing. Okay. In my sneak. So glad you are zoomed in right now and can't see this. Because he's currently wearing his animal from the Muppets pyjama trousers that I bought him. Which, like me, he gets in from work, has a shower, changes into something a lot more comfortable. Don't you like your... Uh... Not for the minute, thank you. Oh, Is it defrosting well? Yeah, it seems to be. So I've just had an order through for some my latest Gerald Cosmetics order. And I'm trying their Slay the Day Away balm. But it has coconut oil in it and because it was a cold day when it arrived, <laughs> the tube's absolutely rock solid. It says you've got to pop it into a bowl of warm water to soften it back up again. Milky Joe and the cocoa nuts. <laughs> Except it's rose scented. Oh. Get your head around that one. Mm. Right, so that's how you can give yourself colourful brows while chatting to your husband about coconut oil. The chat is optional. Oh. Right, you sounded like Balam then. Oh. There's this cat that I've been watching on Instagram. I know that sounds strange. This cat's hysterical. If I remember, I will link his channel in the description. He literally talks back to you. It's like, oh, Balam. Wow. What's the matter with you today? Love the cat. Absolutely love the cat. Anyway, going back in with my pencil brush, or my pencil blender, I'm going to go back into Charmed, which is the brown. I'm going to very lightly join that up with the outside edge there and just run it along the lower lash line like so I've always struggled with very very watery eyes um, I've always had that ever since I was a kid um, So I, I've struggled to put anything on my actual waterline itself. I have done it for photos and if I was doing like a, a competition type, you know, like a makeup competition in one of the makeup groups that I'm in on Facebook, um, I have done it for that, but um, literally it lasts just as long as I can get some photos taken and then the eye starts streaming so if you struggle the same instead of putting stuff on your waterline if you smoke out the lower lash line which I'm about to show you how to do um, you can get a similar effect so it finishes the eye look off without irritating the eye and I'm going to go into Kiss My Hess which is the lightest shade that I use at the top here to buff out with. And I'm going to pick some of that up on this flat blender brush that I used for the shimmer. And just really lightly buff that along the lower lash line like so. Just to soften it up a little bit. Oh, the next door's dropped something. You can tell it's the nice side because it wasn't followed by an expletive that I'm going to have to try and blur out. Yeah. So, 
that, my darlings, is the eye look so far. Now, I wouldn't normally put a pink toned highlighter with a green look, but this arrived today and I've been waiting for ages for it to get here from Kaleidos. This is their Space Age highlighter. Ooh. Shade number two called Star Surfer. I love that it's in these tins. And then, oh, when you open it up, you have a little bit of black foam. Okay. Oh, and then you have one of these plastic condomy things. And there is the highlighter. Ooh. Right. This is a cheap lip brush that I got from eBay probably a decade ago. So I'm going to pop a little bit of this up under my brow here. And this side. Ooh, pretty. And I'm going to do the inner corner. Regular viewers know that I do like to take that along under my lash line, under the inner corner there, and just blend it in with whatever colour I've run along underneath the eye. You don't have to do that, you can just do inner corner highlight like that, but I just find that with my eye shape, it does just finish the look off nicely to blend it down. Okay, my darlings, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some more of this highlight. I love my face. <laughs> Have my big floofy brush ready. This is floofy uh, brush. Floofy. It's an official term. Yes. Oh, I like it. This is the Morphe Jeffrey JS21 floofy brush. Uh, I shall be applying this with this over much of my face. Um, <laughs> I will put some mascara on, choose a lipstick, do something with my hair and I'll be back with my final finished look. Again for you my darlings, instant. Hello, I am back. Okay, uh, I changed to a smaller brush because it wasn't giving me the kind of reflection that I wanted. So. Change to a more densely packed brush to give me more of a ta 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 ta. Uh, the mascara that I used was the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. Love this, but my usual warning it's got a very, very big bristle head to it. So if you have small eyes, you may struggle, particularly on your lower lash line. But I do like that. I really that really has it's 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 neck and neck with my Catrice waterproof and we all know how much I love that one. The lippy is another one of the ones that the lovely header sent me. It's a Charlotte Tilbury and it's a Kim KW. Do I look like a Kardashian? Do I look rich enough to be a Kardashian? That'd be ridiculous, of course I don't. Right. So, this is my final look after the palette bingo with the Just My Luck palette. Uh, if you are one of my 4F babies, please, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are still coming along with a hatchet and a culling a lot of you, which is lovely. Uh, once you have double checked that and have done the usual of maybe giving me a cheeky little like and a comment and possibly even sharing this film I'm going to need you to go over to the girlies I'm going to need you to go to Nona and I'm going to need you to go to Laura and check out their films now remember Nona is using the Just My Luck palette Laura is using a palette which she decided she didn't need to buy this one because she has the palette that she's using. Now, I don't even know what that palette is. All she said was, instead of me duping the palette, do you mind if I use the palette that 
I thought, well, because I've got this, I don't need to buy that one anyway. And we're like, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Not a problem at all. So even I don't know which palette it is. So I've got to be honest. Normally I watch Nona first and then Laura. I, I'm going to do it the other way around today. I'm going to go and watch Laura first. Because I want to find out exactly what that palette is that she's using. See whether I've got it. It's always possible. I do have a lot of palettes. Anyway, that reminds me I do need to film the second half of my palette um, collection. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow if the hubby's uh, willing when he comes in from work. Maybe we mm. can uh, maybe we can twist his arm and persuade <laughs> him. Anyway, when you go over to Nona and Laura, do all the usual good YouTubery things, hit them a like, give them a comment, share the love that you always show me in my description box every time you visit. And if you're not subscribed to them, why not? You're missing an absolute trick. They are both wonderful ladies. They both have excellent skills. You should be following them. But not in a stalky way. Because it's inappropriate. <laughs> but not in a stalky way because that would be inappropriate. Thanks, hubby. <laughs> trust you to go. Trust your mind to go that way around. Yeah. Too many people following people at the moment. It's getting a bit scary. Who's that in the cupboard? <laughs> <sighs> if you are here from either Nona or Laura's channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, it's not always this mad. Sometimes it's worse. In fact, usually it's worse. And normally, when the husband makes an appearance, it gets interesting. Very That's the phrase. Very interesting. interesting. Uh, if you have made it this far through, I'm yeah. guessing you must have liked something about the film, even if it is just the husband's mumblings towards the end of it. So it would be awesome if you two would like to join the 4F family. It is super easy to do. You hit that subscribe button, you turn it from red to grey. You ring my bell, ring my bell. Select all notifications, say yes I want all notifications, yes I really want all notifications, yes I really, really, really want all notifications. When did the options get that complicated? And then YouTube might send you one out of every four notifications because sadly gone are the halcyon days when you could just like a channel and YouTube would tell you when they upload. Happy days. Anyway, that is quite enough for me for one day because you have got two more films to go and watch. So, all that remains for me to say, my darlings, as ever clapping seal of a husband is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time bye for now and bye from the husband too bye bye see you soon he's not actually in the screen I'm not actually in the screen can I be in the screen? am I allowed to be in the screen? Oh. hello bye bye for now too Harry, Harry. I like Harry Jesus. He has got trousers on, I promise. I told I, I do, you, animal I, pants. I, I do have trousers on, it's fine. Right, see you next time. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>